bouncy, enthusiastic man is standing on a stage in the White House on the 12th of May 2009. Friend Alex Lacamoire is sitting at the piano beside him as he excitedly tells the audience about his new project, a hip-hop rap concept album based on the life of, he says, someone I think really embodies hip-hop. Treasury Secretary Alexander Hamilton. A wave of polite giggles comes from the audience. You laugh, but it's true, he says. He explains his reasoning and he launches into the first song. First Lady Michelle Obama is snapping along to Hamilton's story of hardship and the audience is engrossed. As he finishes and leaves the stage, the audience gives a standing ovation and President Obama can be seen beaming at the creativity of this man, Lin-Manuel Miranda. Two American success stories face to face as the latter opens a new chapter in his life. This is his story. Born and raised in Inwood, New York, to psychologist Luth Town and Democrat consultant Louis Miranda Jr., Lin Manuel is the epitome of the dream of the American melting pot. His father is a Puerto Rican immigrant, and his mother's ancestry boasts a remarkable mixed race couple who outran the racist marriage laws of the 19th century. He also has Mexican relations on his mother's side and considers his ancestry a quarter Mexican. His name was even inspired by a poem about the Vietnam War by Puerto Rican writer Jose Manuel Torres Santiago. Even from birth, then, his life has been shaped by art with a strong message. This melting pot of cultures then might have influenced his own composing, which he began at a young age writing jingles. A university formed a hip-hop comedy troupe and started writing musicals, one of which would become In the Heights his first hit. After graduating, he, John Buffalo Mailer and Thomas Kell worked to revise In the Heights, which opened on Broadway in March 2008. After the closure of In the Heights in January 2011, he would contribute to the musical adaptation of Bring It On, contribute to a few other musicals, make some appearances on How I Met Your Mother and Modern Family, and also submit a demo for the new Disney movie Moana. He would also take a vacation and read a book whilst there. But I'll get back to that later. The following year, though, the fruition of all his work since that vacation would take him to greater heights still. The book that he read was Chernow's biography of Alexander Hamilton, and using the songs from the mixtape that he premiered in the White House, he and Lacamoire created Hamilton, an American musical. It started off Broadway in January 2015 and moved to the Richard Rogers Theatre on Broadway in August that year. It was an explosive success, with tickets becoming so hard to come by that they had to start doing a raffle for $10 tickets, which generated queues that were so long they even started doing mini performances out on the street. Since then it's received a record-setting 16 Tony nominations, won 11, and has opened in multiple cities in the US and even in the West End. It's been described as being as revolutionary as its subject matter, partly through its use of mixing musical styles and genres, and also its emphasis on casting people of colour. Personally, I've been a fan since the original Broadway recording, and although my expectations when I saw the London production last year were incredibly high, it still managed to exceed them. Perhaps the most revolutionary part of this musical, though, was the way it framed the story of America being the story of immigrants, something which Miranda knows a great deal about himself. He's lived with the stories of immigrants and their struggles and everything they've contributed to the world and their adopted country. Whilst most, if not all, the characters portrayed in Hamilton are whites, casting non-white people to play these characters is not only a nice reversal of the racist trend of whitewashing non-white characters, but it also speaks an important message about the legacy of people of colour and immigrants in largely white societies, that anyone can see themselves as the influencers and creators of the day. But if in Miranda's own words a legacy is planting seeds in a garden you never get to see, then he's planted and watered a whole flower bed by now. Since then he's been working on numerous projects and Hollywood has really hit him with projects such as Star Wars The Force Awakens and Moana, the latter of which earned him an Oscar dot. He's got an important part in the upcoming Mary Poppins sequel and he's working with the legendary Alan Menken to write songs for the live action remake of Little Mermaid. But it hasn't all been fun and games for him after Hurricane Maria wrecked devastation on Puerto Rico, affecting many of his friends and family. He's been a keen activist, fighting for the rights of the Puerto Ricans and for funding for the relief efforts. He's raised $30 million so far. Making this many fans, though, he's inevitably made a few enemies too. Perhaps none more so than the so-called ruler of the United States. After a horrid election campaign and his virtually non-existent response to the hurricane, Lin-Manuel Miranda made his feelings about him perfectly clear tweeting he's going straight to hell. And no doubt many of the president's supporters aren't too keen on him either. 
After all, he's painted George Washington as a black man and keeps stressing the importance of immigrants. One of the most common criticisms of this modern Shakespeare, though, is that much of his art is often viewed as being political. But what so many people who don't create don't understand is that the artists telling the stories of their lives will always be political, as long as their lives are so enormously shaped by the decisions of politicians. If you make the experiences of being an immigrant or refugee political instead of humanitarian, then sharing these experiences will unavoidably be political. Indifference is the luxury of the privileged. So yes, Lin-Manuel Miranda's legacy will be political, but it will also be incredibly artistic. And a combination of the two in this case is not a bad thing. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit like and share it. And if you're new here, I would love to have you subscribe so you can hear even more of the incredible stories of music and film, just like Lin-Manuel Miranda's.